it was not very exciting to me and the reason the reason why i say that mostly boils down to the the fact that you don't actually have ignite afterburners until you hit level 11 with rainer so you you basically are in this horrible situation where you can't even use the prestige until you're well well in there so i haven't made any videos about this one because nothing nothing really happened um i i didn't even use the prestige to get to level uh 11 if i'm being honest and in fact I'll, I'll even go one step further and let you know that i only during this prestige did i finally discover it was only in this prestige that i actually discovered you have the ability to use like the default rainer set instead of uh, the new prestige so you your, your level does reset but you actually aren't locked into the one that you unlocked when you reset it if i don't i don't really think i'm getting this across very well but all i'm trying to say is it was not it was not really that good so it was it wasn't um but here we are now once again and we got a we got a vorazen homie or sorry zeratul Zeratul can collect an unlimited number of artifact fragments, but his units cost more. Okay, so we've got Giga Chad Zeratul. Is, uh, that's, that's the impression I'm under here. He's going to make some Tesseract cannons. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Well, let's let's get one bunker. You know, we want to be good teammates. I don't want to be... I don't want to be that guy. You didn't even know about this co-op feature in particular in StarCraft. Is it popular? Uh, co-op has been the most popular mode in StarCraft 2 since it came out. It's kind of crazy to think about. The 1v1 population, I think, before Legacy of the Void was maybe, maybe about two or three times what it was. But about, about half the 1v1 players moved over. There were a lot of people that played 2v2 and 3v3 that moved over. But Star StarCraft 2's player base uh, over the years has generally fluctuated between a peak of about 2.2 2 million monthly active users and 1.6 million monthly active users. Uh, the last time that we got data from Blizzard internally was uh, 2019, 2020, I think. Um, but there's not really, there's not really too much, uh, too much other info that we get lately. But the last time that we were, the last time that I got to see the numbers, um, Total Biscuit was the first person to publicly share it. So it kind of was like, you know, they they were like, okay, yeah, cat's out of the bag, I guess. A lot of people play StarCraft. But there's there's like at any... I think the, the safe estimate would be for co-op, at least half a million people play co-op every month around the world. It's really crazy, but it's true. It's just another reason why... When they tell you that RTS is dead and stuff, they're just they're just lazy. They just don't they just don't want to put in the work. A lot of people play this game still. A lot of people play this mode and nothing else. You'd be you'd be shocked. Co-op's awesome, by the way. You've got like thousands of hours of gameplay of dynamic, like kind of RNG-ish enemy compositions. The pathing is so good, you don't really it doesn't really feel robotic even when you play the same mission over and over, so all, all of those things to me are a big, big, big reason why StarCraft 2 is actually still a very popular game. I think the 1v1 player base in total is about 100,000 or less. Like, it's it's still a pretty decent population. Uh, a lot of... There's a lot of content creators and people who play full-time that have multiple accounts that they play a lot of games on. So I think, I think there's a decent amount of uh, overlap for some users in the overall player numbers, but... That said, even if there were only 90,000 real people playing 1v1s every month or every season, that's still a lot. It feels like the seasons have gotten a little bit longer as the years have gone by. So maybe that has an effect on it. But even if they're only showing up for a week or two out of the season, a lot of people just do their placement games. And unless they're playing really well, you know, then they just take a break. So... That's not that's not like a crazy or out out there thing to, to say either. Kind of like a known thing. This the player the player count always spikes up at the beginning of the season and then slowly goes down until the new season. 
Because if you don't change the maps or update the game, people either get bored or they plateau in skill and they're like, well, I just don't really feel like uh, trying to make that push this season and then they wait for the next one. I'm cruising here. I'm cruising over here. Now the afterburners do make the BCs attack faster, which is my favorite thing. I, I feel historically a lot of attack speed boosts in co-op have not really been very good for BCs. They don't really, they don't really get the same benefit out of it as some other units whether it's an engine limitation or just a performance performance concern so the fact that the afterburners actually does make them pew pew faster is, is very satisfying it's very satisfying for me every 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 battle cruiser needs love you guys know that we love battle cruisers out here. I don't have the Hyperion's uh, damage level up thing yet, though. The the plus two. That's that is what I need. Here's some more structures. I just love my love my big beautiful battle cruisers. I just need my attack upgrades to see my BCs to stop being so weak. Like the hustle, but I advise against it, commanders. It'll be easier to take out the structures in the daytime. Define easier. Yeah, see, Hyperion softened them all up for me. Easy. Clear them out, clear them out. Don't get too bold out there. If our base falls to the infested, this planet will be lost. Now we had a great stream on the YouTube yesterday too. It went about seven hours. I I did I did get a little mentally worn down. We only we did not run into a single Zerg until about five hours into the stream. Well, maybe a little over five hours. That was that was painful. You know, that was that was one of those emotionally difficult, kind of challenging, you know, will will he make it, won't he make it kind of situations, but we did we did make it. We did eventually run into some Zerg players as well towards the very end of the stream. And it's all about it's all about perseverance, right? But uh, that way we did it in 4k so super HD VODs available over there Did the whole stream in 4k it had a little bit of a longer delay, but honestly, I Didn't didn't seem too bad All right, my BCs are healed. Let's go oh, I should probably help this side, huh? Let's get to work, commanders. 
We have to burn enough of the infestation today so that we don't fall behind. Looks like we can find additional structures here. It's kind of fun though. The steam looked great on the TV. Had it in the background through your work day. Nice. Yeah, a lot of people said that the it looked crazy good on their TVs. I'm like, you know, a lot of people don't have 4K monitors. Nobody will probably care. Everybody in chat's like, Nate, we we have TVs, you know. We're not we're not we're not cavemen. And I was like, oh yeah, I forget forget people just I uh, forget that. 4K TVs are a little more accessible than 4K computer monitors, you know. See, that's not that's 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 where the shared perspective becomes so helpful and useful. Because that's exact that's exactly the kind of out of touch thing that I would get wrong, you know. I'm glad I'm glad we were able to work together to solve that. I mean, it was really all you guys, but you know. I think if you're on my team, then I, I think I get uh, I get a participation trophy, and I, I need that. So, who won the ESL Masters? The grand final was amazing. It was Gumiho versus Serral. Now, Serral is the greatest StarCraft II player of all time, so I would just like to make it very clear that it. I mean, obviously he won, but it was a great series, and Gumiho even took a game off of Serral with nothing but BCs. And when I say nothing but BCs, I mean, he obviously had a few other units, but for the purposes of my hyperbole, I need to tell you that he made nothing but BCs. The, re the cost of repairing all these battle cruisers is, is murdering me, though. That's really the worst part. I, do I just don't have the gas. I don't have the gas to... Can't even start my plus three attack, which I desperately need. Yeah, we had way too much TVT yesterday. I don't I don't ever want to I don't ever want to feel like I did that day. I don't ever want to have to play that much TVT in one day again. That was that was really horrible. Like that that really I that felt like some divine justice was coming down on me. I I did something wrong. I I I embarrassed myself. Well, I don't know. I guess I guess that's how it felt. I felt embarrassed. I don't even have control over what matchups I get, and I felt embarrassed. That's how bad it was. I was like, where's the barcode Zerg that always swarm host rushes me, you know? Where's that guy? Where where was he yesterday? We have a day off? It's kids bar mitzvah? Do I ever lose these co-op games? No, I'm pretty good at these. I did, uh... A really long series on uh, my YouTube a long time ago. We had quite a few seasons, but I went through almost every single commander and I did a lot of prestiges. I got them all up to the max level, usually the week that they came out. I had a whole, I had a whole uh, series based on co-op. And then I stopped it because they stopped updating co-op for like a while and stopped updating it for a while manx was like the last one that they added and then that was that was kind of it but the uh difficulty this is like the brutal difficulty as compared to the campaign so there's a lot of enemies they're very strong but that what's important for me to tell you is that this is not the hardest difficulty but the reason why i'm playing brutal and not brutal plus or anything like that is because i actually am not allowed to so the game the game restricts you from queuing higher than brutal if you uh if you aren't the max level and uh, again it's very important that i be very clear here i am i am specifically doing a a mode in the game where it resets your level so because my level gets reset to do the prestige that locks me out of being able to do brutal plus do you, am i making myself clear so it is a little bit easy because i don't think brutal is very hard i don't think brutal is tough like only only certain commanders that are low level against very specific compositions like just completely fall on their face but it's not it's not that normal for that to happen so 
There's a lot of zombies. A lot of zombies. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Well, then let's get back. Let's get back to work then. Let's get to it. But yeah, covering co-op stuff used to be like my big thing. I, I revealed. I did the reveal for Nova. Like, I was the first person. I was literally the first person to announce that the Nova co-op commander was a thing. I got to go into Blizzard headquarters. We talked about this the other day, but I got to go to the headquarters. I got to play on a debug version of the game with one of the developers as my teammate. They used a bunch of cheats that aren't in the real game to uh, give me money and make my Nova unkillable so I could just mess around and do whatever I wanted with no cooldowns. It was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. It's a little bit of a janky video, but if you if you look on my YouTube channel, it's, it's still there. It's a Nova first look. But yeah. Yeah, I was I was the co-op guy. I was the co-op guy for a while. But when they but like the prestige only came out in the final patch of the game. So there was like a two or three year gap where there wasn't that much for co-op. And that was kinda when I stopped. That was kinda when I stopped making co-op stuff. So they just didn't this didn't really change anything in there for a long time. Yeah, we did coffee and co op. We had co op king. I've got another sector with structures on my scanners. Doing this is a little bit like a coffee and co-op. I'm recording this. This will I'll, I'll throw this up in 4K on the YouTube. Why not? I've been having a little more fun playing StarCraft again. You know, the last co-op... The last co-op prestige we did, the one that made me take a couple... <laughs> the one that really put me on a long break from doing co-op content was... Uh, Han and Horner. That one was... That was hell. All right. Han and Horner had the worst prestige in the game. It's it's so bad. They have the best... They have one of the best ones. But they're... The, most of their prestige are like... It was... It was horrible. It was really bad. I'm sorry, guys. The Strike Fighter platform prestige for Han and Horner was so bad. It made me take like a, a, a year-long break from wanting to play co-op. That's how bad it was. I questioned everything about my life my choices what it brought me to the place that i am today and playing han and horner prestige i was one of one of the things that set me on a bad path the fact that they made the they're like oh platforms are uncapped but they cost twice as much so it doesn't matter because you can only afford to build like 12 anyway and while doing that, you're completely broke and have absolutely nothing else. So you just, your teammate is just like, why are you even playing this game? It was, it was rough. It was rough. I wasn't crazy about it. They should have, it should have just been strike fighter platforms are uncapped. And then they should have just let you make as many as you want. Because that was always, it was always going to cut into your ability to have any other type of army. That was, that was really what got me. Like, it was obvious that if you were going to do this prestige, you wouldn't be building anything other than strike fighters. So making them that expensive was just took the fun out of it. Oh, he killed all my battle cruisers. They are all dead. They are all dead. My battle cruisers are super dead. Survive! Survive! Is that Viking coming? Oh. Your ally needs help. You can't do this allies are in battle. Nuclear launch. I'm going. What is it? Uh, where are my BCs coming down? There we go. Okay, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Swap away. I'm I didn't want to have to use my minerals, but I think it's clear that I just don't have enough gas. Just don't have enough SP and gas. I think it's cheaper to make a medic and just let her heal the BC. Right? Probably cheaper to just do that versus repairing it. That was my that was my mistake. I should have just made eight medics and kept them in my base. Again, it's still pretty hard to lose because it's only brutal difficulty. But again, I'm also not allowed to play brutal me? plus, so. Amon wants to attack us now too. Perfect. Let's see what we got. 
that is a pretty huge force if i'm being honest attacking into that would be foolhardy daybreak is just around the corner hold the line until then all right well we should we should clear it here I just like that I still get to build battle cruisers with this prestige, so that makes it a lot better. It's kind of like a crunch -a ties me captain sort of thing, you know? You, you know what I'm talking about. Sunrise. That's our Infested structures are here, it says. Too few structures today. No, there are no, there's not. Whatever that means. There's nothing there. We got them all. Got him. Oh, nope, there's two more. What's up? You can count on me. Break it down. Sounds like a plan. There we go. Now we got him. GG. Well done. It. 